Hey, fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. This is something for all of you gear nerds out there. You probably already know Henrik. He's a writer for the Swedish Tennis Magazine. He strings for the Swedish Davis Cup team. He is a good player. He's been in plenty of my videos and podcasts before. And today we're going to sit down and summarize the gear of the year. It's been a, a long year of gear. There's been a lot of rackets, a lot of shoes, a lot of strings. We're going to try to go through them. It's not going to be linear. We're going to have to kind of jump in and out depending on different topics. But we're going to do our best in summarizing what happened in terms of gear in 2023. But first of all, how are you, Henrik? I'm good. I've had some, um, I don't know, maybe some kind of corona again. Um, so um, it's been off court now for a couple of weeks. I tried to play two days ago and I was pretty rusty, so to say. But um, things is slowly getting better. Uh, but it seems like everyone has some kind of cold or coughing or something like that these days. So I'm good. Good to hear. Yeah, even in Spain, people are a little bit have a cold, although we have like yesterday was 24 degrees Celsius. So it was pretty, pretty good weather overall here. So a lot of tennis for me and uh, not so much for you. And to give the listeners a little bit of an uh, insight, like in in Sweden in winter, it's obviously quite cold and dark and you have to play indoors. And there's still a lot of people who want to play indoors. So when I lived in Stockholm, for example, I struggled to find partly like hitting partners sometimes, but also tennis courts. Do you have the same situation over there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my club, we have four indoor courts. Uh, we would need maybe six or seven. <clears throat> you can play in the morning, like seven o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. Uh, then you have to go to work. But if you don't work, you can play maybe until one or two p.m. But after that, it's full every day until yeah, the last time is 10 p.m. and it's full every day. <clears throat> On the weekends, we have, I think, 27 different teams that use the courts for league play. So if you are lucky, you can get the court maybe at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday or 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And that's not so much fun to go up at those times. So indoor, it's pretty limited here. But it's in the bigger cities, it's the same everywhere. <clears throat> if you are going to like a smaller town or smaller club, there is always good availability of courts during the weekends, but not during the weekdays. So yeah, we're struggling. If you get to play like one or two times every week, yeah, that's good in winter, but it's like that everywhere almost. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Like in my hometown where I'm going to uh, to celebrate Christmas in a in a week, uh, I, there are courts if you play during daytime. I'm lucky enough that I can play during day. Uh, obviously, it's not like a packed group of players I can play with. Maybe some coaches and stuff like that that actually work with tennis. But otherwise, it's it's tough. Like evening times, there is no no slot. So I think in in colder countries, like I think the especially bigger cities, I think it's tough with with finding tennis courts when the when you can't play outdoors. So I think that's what we see. Yeah, and we have a pretty short outdoor season. We start maybe end of April and. April and May, normally the courts are very, very soft as well. So they are not good to, to use. And then funny thing is that when the court are at its best in end of August, beginning of September, everyone wants to go inside indoor because uh, the tournaments are starting very early and um, the practices are beginning very early indoors. I think we could play at least September, full September outdoors in Sweden. I think that would be good for everyone. So... Um, um i i think it's better to maybe not rush out in april and instead play longer outdoor in uh, september yeah it makes sense makes sense yeah it's that's uh, an issue but still you've been testing loads of gear i actually visited you which was great uh, and we tested a lot of balls so the youtube video you can find on the channel as usual and uh, with the ball test uh, hopefully we can play some more tennis and test some more products in the future together uh, we also had one thing that I want to mention before we start. This is one of the most viewed Tennis Nerd videos this year, which was the wooden racket test that we did with Epoch Tennis, the Swedish tennis company that are trying to bring wooden rackets back, you know, and that was, that was a fun one. Uh, have you heard from them or have you hit with more wooden rackets after that, Henrik? I have not <clears throat> played with any wooden rackets after that. Uh, I mean, the wooden racket was much better than what I expected actually I mean we could maybe it would limit our game in a match like in a tournament but just 
having a practice, it was uh, more than okay. Um, I have been in contact a little bit with them. I'm going to make uh, a deeper um, magazine article about them during next year uh, with the manufacturing process. Uh, so it will be really nice to see how they are making it because they are making every racket by hand by themselves. So it's a true craftsmanship in those rackets. Uh, and it will be a pleasure to to try them a bit more to see how they are maybe with my strings and yeah, my type of grip and, and so on. So it will be interesting to keep, try them a bit more. Yeah, I think so. I would also like at some point. I mean, obviously, they're quite expensive. So it's not like with other <clears> brands that they ship a racket uh, for you to test uh, because it's uh, if it's like a handmade product that costs like 1200 euro to buy i think it's it's going to be very difficult to ship them around you know that's how it is overall it's something we've talked about before that i just wanted to raise is that like the brands overall uh, you and i we both review rackets we have for many years uh, but we've seen a trend with uh, some kind of reluctance to actually send out demos and uh, and you know before they don't care so much if you send them back or not not all of them it's been up and down depending on the brand but it seems like uh, they are a little bit less uh, keen on, on sending demos out and is that something you've noticed as well absolutely it's really i mean at the moment i don't have anything new to try i mean i have old rackets to try but i i don't have one single new racket for 2024 to try um i know there are some new models coming but i have not seen them i have not gotten any samples i have not got any information at all about them so i think uh, i don't know why i'm um i don't know understand i don't understand actually why they are not sending out any demos to try um and um yeah i mean it doesn't cost so much for the companies to send out the demo and it's important for them to to have like um visibility in the magazines and not in the um, reviewers on youtube etc but the trend is uh, really in a downhill pace going down uh, with samples and stuff like that so um, and it's the same for shoes um, uh, rackets bags um, so it must be that companies don't sell that much these days and they are on a tighter budget or that they have so much puddle stuff that they don't sell that they need to clear first before they get them ready to go again on samples i don't know or if they are uh, skipping reviews at all i don't know yeah it's it's hard to, to know exactly because I, I i sometimes try to get a good connection with the brands just to know their schedule and sometimes that's even difficult to get the schedule right what what are you releasing when do i have to prepare my reviews and that's a little bit of a downer because like, you don't even know when things are coming out. Some brands are okay with that, but overall, they're pretty bad at that. It's like just getting this idea of this is the 2024 calendar. Obviously, they pre-plan everything. These are bigger companies usually, and they should have a clear schedule of like, this is where this new strike or new uh, new boom or whatever. You know, So uh, it's it's been a bit of a challenge and good to let people know that it's a bit of a challenge sometimes to be a reviewer when you don't have the full picture and uh, some brands might not be super excited that you are going to be honest and both Henrik and I are we we always try to be like a super uh, objective you know if we don't like a product we say that uh, but not all brands can handle that they don't like it they want to have a positive review uh, if they send you a racket or whatever so uh, that sometimes is a reaction you 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 get from from the brands so uh, we'll see if if 2024 if things open up a bit more you know with with some demos, but uh, yeah, so far I I don't know a huge a lot about what's happening in 2024. Uh, I have some ideas. There are some, you know, the speed is coming. Uh, I'm testing that currently, so that's fun. Strike, uh, we've both been testing, uh, and um, there's some other things happening towards the end of the year. But uh, but we'll see. Uh, what's yeah, what's your have, feeling um, around this? I I, um, I was remembering I have a full bag from one brand that will be launched in early 2024 five different models i have uh, i'm looking at it right now but i cannot show it a new bag and a new set of rackets um uh, so i have um, one brand has been sending out those rackets uh, but i cannot talk about them yet so um but otherwise about the news coming up the speed 
I have not been playing with the speed a lot and not the new version. The speed, I think, judging from the player's experience, I think the speed is the most successful the last couple of years from head. Um, they have really done something right. Uh, it's a really good line of rackets. Um, the other brands that are releasing, I think, the, I mean, I know that Yonex, I think, is releasing the new E-Zone, but it's pretty much just a new paint job from what I understand. And it should be maybe because the current version is very popular. Um, apart from that, I I don't know that much, actually. It's been really, really difficult to get information, uh, like you said, like a time, like a schedule when they are going to release it because I'm writing for written media and we have like a deadline one month before the issue is published. So I have like a pretty tight for, for example, for, um, um, for our first issue that comes out in February, I have a deadline early January. And, um, so I need the samples quite early. And so far I've only from this brand that I was talking about that have sent me five rackets. So, um, uh, maybe they will get um, a full article, yes, because they are the only ones that has been sending samples. Yeah, it's true. I no, it's it's funny actually. Like I only have really one brand that sent me stuff. Did not the same brand as you or you, but it's 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 a funny situation because it should be in their best interest to be early as well because. I, I mean, I'm, like you, I want time. You know, I want to be able to try different string setups. The string makes a huge difference. Sometimes it's not very string sensitive racket. Sometimes you you string it at too high of a tension, doesn't play nicely. You string too low at a tension, you need to restring it so you actually can can gauge how much power you're getting from the racket, how easy it is to control, what launch angle you're getting from the string pattern and so on. And without, if you just have like a two weeks or whatever, it's not enough. You know, you need you need to have a little bit more time with the racket. So I, I think they need to up their game a bit. And if they want to size, like sign some NDA or something, like you can't show anything, which I, I never try to do anyway. I know there are uh, like Instagrammers or YouTubers, whatever, who want, who they don't give a shit. They just show whatever, you know, I, I always want to play ball. But it's funny that you don't really get any kind of credit for that. It's just like, you know, uh, you don't get any schedule anyway. <laughs> it's like no. they don't trust the the reviewers anymore, which is a shame, I think. Yeah, I think they are um, feeling that they uh, maybe they just want to go with like the bigger Tennis Express or Tennis Warehouse and Pro Direct Tennis and stuff like that. Um, and because they feel maybe like the reviewers are they are afraid of not getting a positive review. And maybe the official uh, channels, maybe they are not, they are not telling, I mean, they are pretty honest as well, but they are telling it maybe in a different way that it suits this and this player best. But some YouTubers, maybe like you and me, we have pretty different styles. And if you are making a review, you don't like the racket at all. And for me, it's the best racket ever. So they, they don't, maybe they don't want to gamble anymore, but it would be really interesting if some guys or girls from the racket industry are posting a comment in the on youtube for example and just um, give us an update if there is any new um, strategy because it seems like every brand has pretty much the same strategy these days so maybe it's like it's the new branch standard that they are more more um careful and limited in samples that they are sending out. I don't know. It would be interesting to hear in the comment section if um, if there is any news, new strategy going on. Yeah, I agree. So please comment the Racket Brands or reach out via email or contact us on Tennis Nerd or Instagram, whatever. And it stays between us. Usually, like I, like I said, we, we play ball. We don't want to have any gotcha moments or gotcha journalism. We just want like a clearer picture of what's to be expected and when because whatever business or review stuff you're doing, you want to be able to plan. And if you can't plan, it's, it's quite tricky and uh, you're going to have stressed reviews or they're going to be late or, or something like that. But uh, off to a new topic, 2023, we had a bunch of rackets. Uh, we might have some interesting opinions to compare here. I wanted to start, before we get into like which, which is your favorite re release of the year, which we'll end with, so you have to stick around to listen to it. Um, one of the rackets that you opened my eyes to that I want to mention that did not... Uh, I don't think it was released this year. It was really released 2022. 
was the Blade 100 V8. And that was your racket of choice for at least a while. And like me, you are a chronic racket switcher. It doesn't matter how good racket is. You, you get bored and then you want to play with something else, which is why we're still always reviewing and testing new rackets. You know, we're never getting quite settled. Um, you still playing with the Blade 100 or, or you have you moved on from it? I have actually moved on from it. I'm, I have sold it to a good friend of ours, uh, Daniel Wendel. Uh, a racket uh, connoisseur, one of the biggest racket collectors in, yeah, I think he's one of the bigger racket collectors in the world. Uh, El, El Pistolero or something he, is his nickname on Instagram. Uh, he actually bought, I had five, so he bought all five of me. Um, Blade 100 is a fantastic racket and uh, it ticks all the boxes for me uh, so that i sold it it's just a sign of how sick i am in my head when it comes to <laughs> changing rackets i mean it's a it's a great frame it's um it's good um, control it's good spin it's good power large generous sweet spot and uh, it's a complete racket but i sold it anyway so um uh, yeah i don't know why i sold it but now daniel has it and i think he's very happy with it so it's a good racket. Um, I know there is a new version coming out soon, though. So I will hopefully be able to buy the one, Blade 100. And please note that it's not the light version. Uh, it's just the normal 100. Um, the flex on the 100 light is like 70. And on the um, Blade 100, it was around 60. So it's a big difference. Two different rackets. Same mold, but different layups. So. I think I will have a try with that one again during next year because it's a it's a great frame for pretty much all, each and every category of players. Yeah, and the logic behind the, the layups there and layup is what is inside a racket to remind you you guys out there and and the, the mold is structure of the racket. So what is different there is obviously the lighter model needs a bit of higher stiffness. That's usually what you see because otherwise it's going to be completely in, unstable, right? But while the the 100 square inch one, the regular model had a bit more weight, so you don't need that high stiffness necessarily. So it, it does feel very, uh, very plush, like nice pocketing. I really love the Blade 100 as well and never got my hands on one. Uh, but it's a racket I think both you and I could easily play with in a match. You know, it's not like you already done so, but even for me, it was one of those like just easy to pick up a plate, no, no difficulty at all. And there will be a Blade V9 this year. I mean, a lot of pros out there already showing the the cosmetic. Uh, so, and I've tried it brief, briefly. Uh, we'll get into that. Like, we we'll hope to try it more. Uh, and that's an exciting release coming as well. The the V9. I haven't not tried 100. I only tried 98. So, that's going to be a release that people will be excited about. Like, there are a few, like Pure Drive Blade, Radical, like these kind of popular lines that people always are extra excited about. Uh, over over other lines uh, like for example the prestige that came out this year is not a line that head sells a bunch of while the speed is a uh, bestseller you know so that was one uh, on the list i have here of new releases and this is not going to be in chronological order uh, there was one interesting racket i think we discussed before was the shift from wilson that was like the new new racket on the market like a new model from a big brand uh, what was your feeling around the shift Shift was a racket. When I got it in my hand, it felt extremely good. It was I got the 1620 version, the 300 gram, and just by like holding it in my hand, it was fantastic feel. It was a racket that I really wanted to like. It was a racket that I hoped that I could use and play with, uh, and I really gave it a go. I tried different string setups, um, some lead on different locations, and it felt most of the time it felt good but it also was pretty erratic so i had a difficult time to keep the ball in play uh, i used it um, on the same practice with the blade 100 and shots that were landing good with the blade 100 was going like three meters out with the with the shift so i did not get any control at all from it i could not trust it 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 played well but i could not trust it so for me it was um unfortunately a no go um but i really gave it a try uh, i really wanted to to like it and uh, yeah it was um uh, it was too bad i tried the the 1820 version as well 
uh, but that string pattern is extremely tight in the middle it's um i think it has like 10 central strings instead of eight that is normal so it's extremely extremely tight in the middle and it that felt a little bit more dead um so uh and i also just only got to borrow it for like uh, a week from wilson so I, I could not experiment with it too much so i had to send it back and uh, yeah it was um for me the shift was not the success i hoped for i thought that maybe they have something like the clash or something but um yeah it's a the idea is very good but for me the blade was superior in each and every category yeah i i i would agree that for my game especially i mean you know it's it's more flat and and a little bit more old school uh, i would say the blade worked better i did like the shift a lot the 1620 but it was kind of string sensitive the 1820 which i thought i would like the most um had for me you know a, a feeling that it was still very very spinny almost like too spinny for an 1820 and then i th- for my game personally, like I feel if a racket is too heavy, which the 315 gram, 330 swing weight, you have that. And then you have kind of like a, a quite a lot of power from the racket. I find it very difficult. If you have it like a lower swing weight, you can control the power by, you know, adjusting your swing speed. So you swing faster, get more spin on the ball. But when, when the racket is also heavy, it's tough, tough to swing it fast. So, so you know, heavy and powerful is not a good combo for my game. If it's going to be heavy, it has to be low power. So that's where I find the, the 1820 shift was a bit tricky. 1620, pretty good. A little bit difficult to control. I think that was the generally my, like, the reason I, I, I didn't want to use it for, for match play. I tried it, but I, I couldn't quite play matches with it with, with my game because I couldn't trust it. On When I needed to go for my shots, I felt like the ball would, would go a bit too far, you know, would sail. Um, so that, that was the problem. Otherwise, pretty nice idea, nice racket. Uh, we'll see if the shift V2 uh, could be very good, potentially. Uh, that that's my feeling as well. I think so too. Um, it's nice though that Wilson are trying new stuff. They are not just like releasing updated paint jobs. They are really trying new stuff with the Clash, with the V2, so with the Shift. Um, um, they also remade the Ultra last year. Um, so they are really trying. They are not just making new paint jobs. They are really trying. So they get an A for effort. Yeah. Hundred percent. I think that's. I said that when the Clash was released, that was like twenty nineteen or something or seventeen even. Uh, that 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 was like a, such a positive thing just to have even attempted it. And I did really like the Clash. I still think it's a a great frame in many ways. Not for me personally at this moment, but it's like a racket that I I think has a great spot in uh, in the tennis industry. So I think they other brands should try a bit harder to come up with something, even though it might fail. I know Head tried with the MXG. That was. A bunch of years ago with the like uh, magnesium bridge and the extended main strings that Rafa tried and liked actually. Uh, but then they gave up on that because probably due to sales, I assume, right? So uh, so that that's a, it's a shame that mo- fewer brands actually try you know new things. Uh, other rackets we tried, uh, what was your feeling around uh, the Rafa, the Aero Rafa? We have Rafa back in action soon. He's uh, starting to play in Brisbane. Uh, I actually posted a video now on my Instagram. Uh, I got from a guy that he's training in, in his academy in Kuwait. And we had the Aero Rafa, and he was actually using this cosmetic for his racket. And the Aero Rafa came out as a lighter version, which is 290 grams on strung, that had a more open string pattern uh, for players to get easier access to spin and depth. And then they had the, the crazy, you might argue, the Rafa Origin, which was 370 swing weight, um, 340 grams strong, something uh, very, very heavy racket, but it's supposed to be as close to his specs as you as you can get. Uh, did you try both of these or, or only one? I only tried the lighter 290 grams version. Um, I have customized it a bit. I have added some lead. I have added some silicone in the handle. Uh, I also got a grip too, so I have two overgrips. Um, I have strung it now with um, Solinco Torbite 125. And now I use it like um, I am going to play a league match on Sunday and I will use that racket, I think, or another one uh, that I can show you later. But um, I, I actually like that lighter version. I thought that the string pattern first was to open with a different string setup, but with the tour bite, the I got the enough control. So I actually like it. Um, the specifications are really 
really good now with my customization. Um, I wanted to try the, the heavier version, um, but I never got one from Babola, so I have not tried it. Uh, one thought that I had was maybe to remove, before it was strung, uh, to remove the, um, the, uh, the grommets and the bumpers and to um, take off some uh, of the paint uh, under the bumper. Uh, like Nikki Run from Unstrung Custom does, for example, to reduce the swing weights to maybe, I mean, 370 is not playable for me. Uh, maybe it's playable for 20 minutes, but not in a match. I will be late on every shot, but maybe get it down to 340 or something. Then I could uh, use that racket, um, but I have not got the chance. Maybe I will see if I can find some used rackets or something. Uh, rackets are pretty uh, expensive these days uh, if you are going just to buy it to try um so um yeah we'll see uh, for now it's um i have not tried it but maybe in the future hopefully in the future yeah i also like the rafa in terms of feel the lighter one i mean um i did really like to to hit with it a little bit too much launch for me my game my flutter game but uh, when you actually strike the ball it, the feeling is quite nice it feels like crisp like this kind of compact feeling but still like quite nice pocketing of the ball so it has a it's good mix of a modern racket i think they really nailed many things with that feeling it also looks pretty cool you can argue uh that all the opposite as well but i i do like the design i think it's pretty funky yeah uh, the origin i still play with from time to time just because of like a fun you know it's, it's fun to bring such a beast to the court and then you can hand it over to other players and say hey try this you know see it's, it's like rafa spec and and it's a fun kind of conversation starter. Uh, like you say, you can play like uh, two games with it in a match and you play great two games and then your whole game falls apart because you can't control that swing weight for for, for a match, you know? So uh, that's the problem with that one. But I think also pretty gutsy move. I like that they went for the origin. Uh, I wish now that Head will do it with a Novak racket. So it's more like a Novak um, signature, like Wilson did with Federer's signature. Uh, Go for that, and and I mean the people who want to buy it, they will buy it. I think they will sell enough to make it worth their while, and then you can just get a normal speed if you want the normal speed, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean the head. Um, I don't even remember the the head code these days on Novax racket, but it's pretty much like a micro gel uh, radical layup in. Uh, no, it's a liquid metal uh, radical uh, liquid metal radical layup in. Uh, Microgel radical mold or something like that. So yeah, it's not like, like um, yeah, it's not like a um, super exclusive racket. It's just that Novak has crazy specifications on his racket, and yeah, but it would be nice to uh, if they could do something uh, similar from Head as well. Um, they have done it with the Pro Tour 2.0 with the Prestige 2.0. Maybe they should do it something with Novak as well now when when Bubbola has made it with Rafa's racket. So hopefully they will do something. Yep, we will see. Uh, you never know. Uh, I have a feeling they might not, but we, we will see. Talking about head, uh, we can go to, I think there was the first release of the year. They had two strong releases, uh, but not very, very creative in a way uh, in terms of the gravity and the radical before they moved into the prestige. They were all pretty safe bets. I know head has so many different molds and, and different rackets in their lines that it's tough for them to keep evolving the rackets i think they seem to be selling well anyway but there was one that i was not sure about and i you tried it as well quite a lot the radical and the radical mp especially i did not like the pro as much as i used to i prefer the mp uh, maybe with some a little bit of extra weight just two grams and there was a racket i used for tournaments earlier on um what was your feeling around the Radicals, like the, the very orange new release? Oh, I loved it in the beginning. I bought, I had like five of those. I bought it and used it as my main weapon and I played pretty well with it. And the only problem was that, for example, when you and me were playing and I was using it, it felt like the shots that I was, the balls that I was giving you, they were just like sitting ducks for you. You could just step in and kill them. Uh, the racket was not giving me enough uh, effect of the ball. Um, to, to do that, I had to beef up the swing weight to like 340 or something um, to get enough mass and flow through on the ball. Um, so I actually sold them because um, 
I'm just maybe not a good enough player to be able to get the good result with them. I'm more like, um, if I should use a head racket, I should use the extreme MP or something like that, that generates more spin and more speed, more depth on the ball, more like hit a heavier ball, so to say. Um, but the radicals, if let's say we are just playing like uh, hitting from the baseline, that is a really, really good racket. Uh, and for players that are on yeah, offensive players with good strokes or used with um, heavier swing weight, the Radical is one of the best rackets on the market. So uh, yeah, it was really a, a, a really good racket, but I am too weak player for it, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's the realization we all get to, you know, even like semi-advanced players, which we could call ourselves, <clears throat> but it's like, uh, sometimes you you feel like if you're playing a big hitter like that kind of 98 square inch racket is just giving them not enough pop on the ball not enough depth consistently when they're hitting with heavy spin for example i did notice that also in some matches some matches it worked great like i won one tournament with that racket and and on the itf seniors one but then then i could i played it in some open and i was murdered by some strong player you know so it's like it's a tricky one. Still very good racket, very versatile. Could have asked for more plush feel. Sometimes I feel like they, they could maybe have more pocketing on the radical, like an old radical. Like the old radicals, they used to have a <clears throat> nice pocketing feel. They were 95 square inch, the, the most older ones. And I feel like they could still kind of have a slightly lower RA, more pocketing in the, in the string bed. So you have a bit more connection to the ball. But that racket is still very good. Like it's a modern, modern radical and it does the job. I would say so. I think that was a was a good update and can work for many players. But I I would say that to kind of be a bit, it's not harsh, but still like to to like paint with pretty broad strokes that you would have to be pretty advanced to play with any ninety eight. Uh, that sounds a bit strange, but I think ninety eight strange rackets today they are for very advanced players, like a strong juniors, people that hit big that need control. Obviously, if you're playing recreational tennis and you enjoy playing with a prestige that's 90 square inches you can do that depends on how far you want to take your tennis and how good your opponents are but once your opponents start to get pretty good it's tough to play with the 98 unless you are also very very good so that that's where you're going to get help from the the 100 square inch rackets that that are the kind of standard today you know so that's what i would say there was also a new release early on from yonex the v course their spin line uh, was quite a big change. The racket looked different, <clears throat> different. Uh, Yonex should get props for always going quite big on the releases. They try to change the mold, lay up everything, and here they had like a bit of a shape difference, uh, quite an odd, odd shape to the frame, still isometric, uh, but look almost like a squash racket at times, you know. So, um, what was your feeling around the, the V course? Uh, I liked the V course. Um, I was very close to. Um to buying a couple and um, use the 100. Um, it's very muted though. Uh, Yonex has really, they have servo filters or something like that, or is it that for Percept? The VDM is in the handle. Like. VDM, the servo yeah. filter is with the new Percept line. Yeah, yeah that's correct. But it's very uh, muted um, and um, yeah, it, it's a good racket. I could easily see myself like using it also, the 98 version was uh, very, very good. I did not try the 95 version, but I mean, the 98 version, it's it's really good uh, control, really, really nice frame, a big generous sweet spot, same for the 100. Um, quality control from Yonex is still pretty good. Um, noticing some bigger differences from racket to racket these days, though, compared to a couple of years ago, but still very good. So the V-Core 100 and the V-Core 98 was good updates. Um, rackets that I could easily use in matches that I could, I mean, if I was not in the position to change and try different rackets, that is a racket I could easily like start to use in them more frequently, so to say. Yeah, I think, I mean, you used to play with the V-Core 100 from uh, a few generations ago, if I remember correctly. It was one of your, your go-tos. What happened here, uh, I did not particularly love this update. I, I, there were aspects of it that I really liked, which is like a very soft feeling. Um, 
quite dampened. I would say it's a bit too much dampened for what I like. But I could also say that it's a pretty comfortable racket. So it was easy to just pick up and play and you don't have to worry too much about your arm because the dampening was, was pretty strong and the, and the stiffness seemed quite a bit lower, especially on the 98. I think it was 62 strong, which is quite low for such a racket. Uh, but I, I thought it was a bit too much uh, of, of the dampening and of the change from the previous V-Core. But the V-Core is not my standard go-to racket type of line anyway. So uh, just that giving that... Uh, extra point but uh, yeah it's a little bit of a hate love they they do go quite strongly in one direction with with the onyx rackets but we can actually jump straight away to to a racket we tried a bit together which is another yonix release later in the year their control line that changed name from uh, v core pro to percept uh, say what you want about the name it sounds like medicine to me but uh, i do, do like that they changed the name because the v core pro and the v core were different rackets and did not make sense to have one called v core pro in my opinion um but this line was more my uh, kind of cup of tea what did you feel about it it was really good um we tried the 97 d i think uh, 97 and 100 right i don't think we tried we tried the h no, maybe yeah yeah maybe the h 1820 and uh the 100 not the 100d but the 100 and um i played a couple of matches with the 97 and it felt really good it was really low swing weight 310 strung so it was no mass but uh it worked very well for me. Uh, I also tried the 100, and the 100 was a cons I considered a switch to that one um, just by going for practices. And when you and me played, I played really well with it. But then in when I used it in a match, it was too sluggish. And I tried it in different matches just to get like a feel for it uh, when you are a bit nervous and a bit stiff. Uh, and it was a bit too sluggish. I, I cannot explain it better than I I could not get the right control of the ball, strangely. Uh, the V-Core, for example, is much, much better for me. I can play with much better confidence compared to the Percept. The Percept is really nice, but I think maybe Percept is aiming more like players like you, Jonas, that plays more flat. And the V core is more like uh, spin top spin players, grinders, um, uh, and um, Percept is more like power players like you or Hubert Hurkats and uh, guys like that. Um, so um, it was not for me. It was a good racket, but not for me though. Yeah, I thought it was a good update as well. I thought it was very, I mean, same mold, so not, nothing big changed. I still have not tried a D, which is the 1820. Uh, I'm getting that one from Tennis Warehouse Europe now. Hopefully, before I go to Sweden, I will bring that one because 1820 is a racket kind of style that I like uh, historically, although it might not always benefit me in matches, but but it's one of those rackets. It's it's demanding. It's not for everyone. Uh, I did give out the 97 to a bunch of players, and most people really like the new 97. Uh, I think that was an improvement, a little bit more stable, uh, but you needed to bump up. I also had a swing weight problem with that one, like uh, which which I mean, Yonex usually are top of the line when it comes to weight and balance, but the swing weight it was quite uh, remarkable, like three oh three strong. Uh, and I've seen that with some other. I had the Ultra Pro from Wilson that I'm testing at the moment, sixty nineteen as well, very similar to the Percept, a uh, ninety seven square inches, thin beam control racket, also uh, kind of a shocking swing weight, two nine six. Strong. strong yeah that's so then you need like you know half a lead tape roll to even get up to 320 some, both Hendrik and i although we have different styles we tend to like rackets from 320 to 330 that's kind of the i i think for mo many many players should be where you are swing weight is uh because that gives you some stability good power but it's not crazy heavy to swing that's correct we a perfect racket for us is like 325 with swing weight or something like that. Um, we can, both you and me, me, me uh, can uh, use a racket that is uh, 340, 350, but we get tired too fast. So if you're just trying it like a demo session, 30 minutes, then it feels really good. But it's when you are playing a match, when you are going into our number two, that you are really noticing that uh, it's a heavy racket to swing. And... Um, yeah, it's it's just like that. 320 to 330, that's our um, uh, preferred specification on swing weights. Yeah, uh, and it's good to know that. I think that helps also when you test rackets because you know 
for example, if a racket feels anemic, you know that if you bump it up to three to five, you can give it a little bit better chance of a review because otherwise, uh, some rackets just due to quality control they are they come into light and it's not it's not good, but it's what it is. That's the world we we live in, uh, really. Did you get a chance to try the the new prestigious? By the way, talking about uh, control I have, racket, I have one prestige. The um, I think it is the. They have remade the names, so I'm totally yeah. screwed when it comes to the names. Um, but it was the heavier version, a 1619 version, I think. The toy, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that is, um, it's a nice racket to just hit with, but I'm way too um, weak of a player these days to be able to use that. And it had also a very low swing weight, like 307 strung or something like that. So it was no pop whatsoever. Um, if I should use that, I would beef up the swing by 20 points and maybe use uh, 15 kilos poly string in that to be able to get the enough effect and power from it. So um, Prestige, I just realized it's not for me anymore. I cannot use that. I used the Prestige, the iPrestige in the past. Very good racket. Uh, but these days the Prestige is... Um, I wonder if Head is going to release any more prestigious after the current version because I, they have like the radical, the speed, the gravity. They don't need any, um, any more. I think the prestige is. Um, uh, I don't know the English word. It's called ut död uh, on Swedish. What is yeah, the? Yeah, it's going extinct. I, I think yeah, that's a good, good phrase. Yeah, I, I think I do wonder why they need five prestigious, for example, like you mentioned it. Is it five? It's MP, MP Light, Tor, Pro. Uh, maybe that's four. MP, MP Light, four. Yeah, it's four four prestigious. It's a yeah. lot of rackets because I think the, the target group for the prestige is so small because even if you're a super advanced junior, you need the pop today. And the juniors play with a lot of spin. They have like a semi-Western grip or Western grip they will max go radical i feel like i, th I see a lot of, lot of good juniors with the radical i don't see anyone playing with prestige no. it's too low power you know it's for today's game i mean it's it's for old school guys who like a prestige you know who feel like the yeah. heritage of the prestige yeah but then they could use the prestige 2.0 so i think the if head should remove a silo it should be the prestige because they they have the prestige 2.0 for the heritage guys that's it let the prestige uh, go to to sleep. <laughs> yeah, might happen. I mean, people would be very angry for you or, or <laughs> at you for this. No, I, I think I think they could keep like one, like maybe keep the prestige MP, and, and uh, you know make that a ninety eight again or something. But yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's an interesting take. I think tennis is is going in the way of of more power, more more spin, and you do notice that like when you play. I played a match today. Um, I was playing around with the Aero 100, uh, which is a racket that's not really for me, but it actually has has a denser pattern, and I do like it. Uh, it and it's it's easy to play with. And I played a guy who played a, with a pure drive, and he had a big serve and lefty guy, lots of spin, bit erratic. Uh, and with if I would have played a prestige against him, he, I would have not no chance to defend all the shots. I feel like I, I think it would have been a tough one. Now now I managed to actually play okay and 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 you know get the W. But it's like it's it's tough. Uh, when you're playing with the prestige and you you know defending and, and running around, it's it's just too small of a sweet spot overall. Yeah. And uh, you did not try the prestige classic, I guess, the small eighty nine point five screen head size no, that they. Unfortunately, reached. not. No, uh, it would be really nice to try though. I, I when I was like sixteen, seventeen, I tried the prestige tour. I think it was called with suspension grip, the, the six hundred. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, it was really nice. I bought it only because uh, Goran Ivanisevic and one of my old heroes, Alberto Berasategui, used that racket. He had the classic, though, but um, that was the only prestige available in Sweden. So it would be nice to just uh, go back the memory lane and try the prestige 2.0 as well. I've heard some really good things about it, that it's more pop, more... Um, playable than the old version so it would be nice to give it a try but i don't think i don't i really don't know if it's on sale at all in sweden so maybe i would have to buy it from tennis warehouse europe or something like that yeah it's uh tough to find i i i think uh it's, it's a good racket but it's not something you i mean i know henrik uh, oh sorry i know chris 
Edwards made a switch to it. I have a feeling it might not be a long switch, but it's just a racket that's like it's fun for a hit, but it's not something you do use like if you play regular matches. I know he does play like a regular competitive matches, but I wouldn't bring that racket into a, like ITF seniors or anything. I think that would be a, a little bit uh, tough for me to to play. Uh, before we uh, we end the kind of head, the, you mentioned the gravity that was also a new release this year. And that's kind of like their modern control racket. I think like when I went to Head and Kennelbach, uh, before they had released the Gravity, they they had like the three iconic control rackets. And that was the Prestige, uh, that is now 2.0, the Prestige Classic, that was the first one. Then they had Head Pro Tour, uh, 630 or 280 in the States, which is also still a legend, still out there on the, on the tour. It's something I like to use from time to time. And then now it's the Gravity Pro, where you see Rublev, you have Sverev, you have uh, my buddy Safiulin. They're playing with the Gravity Pro. Many, many other pros are still uh, still playing with the Gravity. Did you try the Gravity Pro or the other rackets from the new Oxetic line? Yeah, I tried the new uh, the, the Gravity Pro, uh, a really nice racket. Uh, unfortunately, most of the Gravity Pros have very high swing weight. They are like 345 or something. Uh, but they are really, really good. Also a racket I could uh, use competitively. I have um, a couple of pro stocks of um, the Gravity Pro in 1619 um, of the new paint job. So it's a really nice racket to use. Um, in the Back in the days, I used the first white Speed Pro, the 1619 version. Um, and I really like that one as well. Uh, so I've always liked um, that kind of rounder shape. So gravity is, um, yeah, it's also a racket that I could use in matches. And I still have it like the, all by in the pro stock. But um, yeah, it's a really nice racket, the gravity. I really, really like that one. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm a fan of the pro as well. And uh, it, like you said, like the swing weight sometimes is is getting up there. I was lucky to get my um, demo racket. My review racket was like below 330 or at least just spot on 330, which is pretty manageable for a pro. And I really thought that was a, a great stick, you know. And otherwise, to get the swing weight down, you either have to scrape, like you said, below the grommets or you have to go with a very thin gauge string, which might not be everyone's cup of tea. So that's tough with when swing weight is high. The gravity line in other aspects, the tour was good, uh, similar to the previous tours, a little bit softer. Uh, so nicer feel and MP was also very very soft, 59 RA racket. So I thought the gravity line was was a very positive uh, update, and I think that line is probably where control players go now because you get the, a bit more forgiveness than the prestige or even radical, but it's still like a thinner beam and less power. So I think you know that's more of a modern frame. Unless you're really sensitive to a larger head size or the head shape, I think it's a way to go for for kind of control players uh, that okay. that want. More, more help. Um, another frame about control that came out this year and also had a new racket in the line was Pro Staff from Wilson. They had the new Pro Staff X, which was a 1619 22 millimeter beam uh, frame, and uh, now kind of copper um, brown design, which was a bit of a talking point. Not everyone liked the design. They want Pro Staff to be black or black red or whatever. Uh, what was your feeling around the Pro Staff X and the new Dune Light? Line. Uh, I also tried the ProStaff X uh, side by side with the Blade 100, and uh, the Blade 100 was superior in each and every category. I did not get the groove at all with the um, ProStaff X. Uh, unfortunately, it was also a racket because I really liked the paint job. So it was also a racket that I really wanted to like. I wanted to be able to like, wow, this is my racket. But the Blade 100 was so much better than the um, Pro Staff X. Um, it was a little bit erratic. Uh, I had difficulties to knowing where the ball was going. Uh, the string, um, the string pattern was, um, I would say, pretty messy. Um, and uh, yeah, I did not get any good groove at all with the um, Pro Staff X. Unfortunately, um, the regular 97. I like the black version better, to be honest. Um, I don't know why, but um, it, it, I, I got a better groove with the older version. And uh, yeah, VX I did not like at all, unfortunately. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. Uh, I, well, I was struggling going back and forth. We, we talk about the 97s. Uh, I think in my review, I mentioned V13 was more my 
cup of tea as well. I just felt like I was more connected to the ball with that racket. The, the V14 felt a bit too dampened. And for, for a racket that's 97 square inch, 315 grams on strong, it's to get the dampening high on that kind of racket is, is tough. Then you, then you, yeah, you, the whole thing is that you want to feel the ball, right? That's the whole reason you buy a racket like that. Otherwise, you buy something else. So uh, it was good. Uh, I did try the noir version later, later on, and that was was a bit of a better feeling. Uh, I just maybe got into it, but it's yeah, it's too much of a racket for me as well. I would say probably for a match play, uh, although it's a very good racket. Ninety seven is also on the small scale of frames. Uh, the the X I had the same experience as you. I tried four G, pretty high tension. Still felt like the ball was going, and even with four like okay, four G usually holds tension pretty well. Um, but the, the string started moving quickly. It felt like it had a lot of movement in the strings. And I, I did struggle with that a lot to actually get some control on my, my shots with the, with the X. I, I like the idea of the X, but it, this just didn't do it for me, uh, personally. And they had in the V13, they had the, the pro stuff 100, uh, the 1619, uh, have they released that one in the 14 version? The yeah, the, I think you mean the six one. There was six one mold, or yeah, no? yeah. of course, yes, yes, six one one hundred. I did. I did not try that one, so I, I can't. Uh, sadly, I missed that one completely. I completely forgot that it existed. I think it gets very confusing, also, especially for. I mean, we're nerds, but especially for new players, like oh, there's a six one a hundred, and there's a pro staff X, which is also hundred, and then you're like, what, what, what is good for me? What should I play? You know, yeah. according to other players, uh, tennis warehouse guys. We tested both. They said that the six one uh, mold of the the hundred square inch pro stuff was was more difficult to control. So it would have been a no for me in that case than the pro stuff X. Uh, I, I think really it's it's funny because like the Blade Hundred was such a good racket. The V eight really impressed me with how it plays. I could you know I even want to go and, and buy it now that I'm th- sitting here. <laughs> Just yeah, same one. same for me. I'm regretting. Yeah, Daniel has to send them back. So. <laughs> 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 Crazy. <Christmas. laughs> yeah, and I know that that's such a good like it's rare you find a racket where you're like, ah, oh, I like the feeling, I like how it plays. It's it's just a solid racket in many ways. And like just more control, you know, compared to the to the Pro Staff X and the Pro Staff 61 six one hundred, which I haven't tried, but I did try the previous edition, liked it, but it did eat strings and for me rackets who kind of you know go through strings is not possible in the long run too much. Where the blade, I felt like, had a kind of perfectly balanced string pattern, which is rare, yeah. you know. You also tried the Pure Drive, but not the Pure Drive 100, because we haven't seen a Pure Drive 100 in a while. Maybe we get one later this year. I don't know, since I don't have the schedule, as we talked about in the early early part of the podcast. Uh, you tried the 98. You said you told me, I think, when you tried it, that you would like this racket, uh, and I, which I did. Uh, but what was your feeling? Um... When the Pure Drive 98 first came out, it was called Pure Drive uh, VS. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I did not like that one at all. It was uh, the sweet spot felt like um, a nickel. It was um, really, really small. Uh, the Pure Drive 98, uh, I think it was more head heavy, felt much more solid. Uh, I tried it in really low tension, like uh, 18 kilos or something like that. And I liked it. It it played really good, uh, very solid. Um, did everything pretty good. Um, maybe more for a flat hitter. So um, I I recommended it to you. Um, and um, yeah, it it was a good racket. Uh, really good update compared to the the Pure Drive VS. Yeah, I also thought it was more solid. It was very stiff though. I mean, I I did notice it a little bit in the arm after a while. Uh, depends a lot on the string setup, but overall a good stick uh, makes me kind of curious about the new Pure Drive. You know, I've never been a hundred percent Pure Drive guy unless we go back to Pure Drive original Pure Drive team. That's early two thousands. Those rackets I thought was were great. Uh, then you know they they had some good sticks also coming years, but then I kind of fell off the Pure Drive in the later versions. It, it felt like it got too much, too much. Sp- openness in the pattern which i didn't like which i think pure drive should be like e-zone it should be more dense so you can actually hit flatter shots as well but with good power um so i'm curious about the new pure drive 100 whenever that is out i think that could be a good one but the pure drive 98 was good uh but i, I would like a little bit lower stiffness maybe for a 98 
uh, for my kind of game. Yeah, I think the pure drive, um, I think it will be out. I have not heard anything, but a guess is um, next summer or maybe US Open or something like that. I think that racket companies these days, now they they go like an extra year with updates. It feels like they have done something um, keeping uh, the rackets longer, selling out the stock. I don't know, um, but I think it will take some time before we see a new Pure Drive. And Pure Drive is also a racket that I've been using each and every version from the first version back in 1995, 96 or something like that. I have used each and every version of Pure Drive as my go-to racket, as my tournament racket. When I play tournaments, I had maybe five, six of them because I was breaking strings pretty often. Uh, so I have been using every version. The FSI version I did not like. I did not like the string pattern, you know, this, this uh, white, black, uh, blue version. Um, but the GT version is still my favorite. The black, uh, all black GT version from, I think, 2012. That is, if I should rank each and every racket that I've been trying, the GT Pure Drive from 2012 is my, that's the best racket I have ever used for my game. That is the best racket. So uh, it was, uh, it's a really good racket. Yeah, I agree. I like that one too. It was also relatively stiff, but with the right string, it, it also, that had a very dense uh, string pattern. And yeah. like uh, quite a lot of uh, WTA players play with that, like Muguruza, I think Pliskova plays with that one. Uh, probably a bunch of other players because it had that like control also and when you get the power and the control from string but that's kind of a racket for me those i like then i can play with 100 you know but i, I want the string pattern to be a little bit denser usually yeah. and i hope they could go back to something like that one that would be great because uh, with the arrow hunt for example, i felt like they went back a little bit to um the like arrow pro drives like the, the denser pattern arrow pro drives and i thought that was a great idea because the pure arrows 16 and 19 they were a bit too open for for my liking so uh, maybe they will do sim something similar with the with drive hopefully Let, let's hope uh, talking about pure drives uh, there was a new brand on the market quite recent release a swedish brand uh, originally made in china these rackets obviously like most other things but the stiga supreme a racket that played like a pure drive early mold i felt like uh, in many ways a little bit more solid maybe i might had a semi-high swing weight without any customization three to five three to six um was a solid stick like i it, it didn't wow me in any way but i like I, I did enjoy hitting with it uh my mother is playing with it right now she she has liked it the most which is probably too heavy for her but she still likes the solid feel so yeah that's good um wh what was your feeling around the stiga uh the First time I tried it, I tried it in um, with the RS Leon strings at about 23 kilos, uh, no customization whatsoever. And uh, it felt um, the swing weight was very low on that one, 310 or something. And it was not enough mass because even if it has the same mold like uh, early Pure Drive, it feels more... if. If I should compare it with some other rackets, it, I would say like a blade in control. Um, pretty small sweet spot. Um, pretty open string pattern though, so you get good spin, but the sweet spot is very small on it. So I added quite a bit of lead on the sides, on three and nine, and beefed up the swing weight to around three to seven or something, and then some silicone inside the handle. Uh, you should also mention that Stiga has the grip shape, the grip size of the Grip 3 Stiga is like two and a half in another brand. So the grip size is also pretty small. But when I beefed up the swing weight, um, lowered the tension a kilo to like 22, 21.5, 22, it played, played pretty good. Um, so it was also a racket that I could use in action. Pretty high swing, uh, pretty high stiffness though, around 70 strung. So it's a pretty stiff racket. Um, I don't know, know if you see it, but behind me, behind the lamp, there is a Stiga Supreme Light. It's a 270 gram version, I think. Um, and I have removed the grommets from it and opened it up and I will customize it to 315 grams because uh, the stiffness of that unstrung is uh, 64 or 65. So it's a lot less stiff strung. It would be maybe 62, 63 or something. And that could be something uh, really, really 
Yeah, nice. So over the Christmas break now, I will customize it and try it and see how it plays. And we maybe we could return to that one because if you are into customization, that racket could actually be something really interesting to try with the low stiffness. So I think you will be more connected with the ball in that version. So it will be interesting to try. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, you know, sometimes, like we talked about this before, but uh, when we mention a platform racket, we usually mean like an Ultra Pro where you have to add weight. Otherwise, you know, it, it's not going to be playable. But sometimes you can get these kind of team and light versions of rackets, uh, pure drives, whatever, you know, the Stiga here. And you go for the lighter model, gives you more room than if you're open to actually, you know, adding some weight, making it your weight and balance. Uh, so if you're a little bit of a, into that stuff, I think sometimes going for the lighter version and sometimes the, the layup of the lighter version, which we talked about a little bit earlier, is, is different. So maybe you get a lower stiffness, then you have you, a racket that you like, but you need to then obviously be, be customizing the, the frame. So uh, I think that's a good point. So uh, I think that was most of the rackets I think I heard you try. I did try some new other ones. I'm going to mention them briefly. You did, you did not try the Lacoste, like the LT23 that was recently. No, no, no Lacoste in Sweden, unfortunately. No, no, okay. Uh, the Lacoste was, was pretty good. Uh, like with many rackets, you get like a, so many 100 square inch, 60, 19 rackets that it can be a little bit boring to keep trying the same. That had a pretty good dampening, I would say. Uh, Thanks to the Lacoste, in, like the thing that's in the handle, the steel rod. I'm not sure if it's a steel rod anymore, but that was the invention from, from René Lacoste. Uh, pretty soft in feel, um, solid enough, and nothing wow as for me. But but you know, not a bad racket. If you if you're an intermediate player and go and buy Lacoste, you know, go ahead. It's not. I'm not gonna say anything bad about it because there was nothing really bad, but nothing really wow either, right? So sometimes. You have these racket reviews where you're like, okay, you know, I'm seeing what they, I see what they do here, but it's nothing, nothing fantastic. Uh, I also tried the Angel React Pro 99. I thought that was very solid frame, uh, very nice that they do 99 square inch 1819. I thought that was a great idea, and that's a racket I, I can play with a lot more. Uh, <clears throat> I felt more solid than the swing weight, uh, so that can be recommended actually if you're into 99 square inch rackets. But I think that was it for the rackets. We had one more, though, uh, that you mentioned as well before, which was the Diadem Elevate 3. That was their third generation Elevate, which is their kind of blade from the American Diadem uh, company. Uh, what, what was your, uh, your take on that one? I've tried it briefly uh, when we were doing the, um, the wooden racket uh, test in Borstad. Um, I think Andreas Bergen, from he used to work for Luxalon. Didn't he yeah. have it? Yeah. And Maybe. we tried that one. I think it was Andreas who had it. And it was a really nice racket. Um, really rich feel, like uh, buttery, soft, but not too soft. So it was a good mix. Uh, really good spin. Uh, very, very solid. It's foam filled. So it's um, when you're opening up the diadem in the butt cap, it feels like it's a very um, advanced manufactured racket it's really advanced um i hope to try that one more it's a, it's i know it's a 98 uh, but you get the string pattern is very open a very open 16 20 string pattern so you get good effect on the ball um and it's very solid it's pretty soft also so yeah it's a racket that i want to try more i have not tried it enough but it's a good really good racket really good yeah no, they they make good rackets. I know you were a fan of the Nova, as was I when I tried that. I didn't try the latest Nova, but the, the previous one was good. So I think there are brands, uh, lesser known brands. Uh, Angel, I talked about uh, Stiga. It's not a bad racket. Solinko White out another good stick. Like there are brands that make good rackets that that are outside the big four or five brands. You know, no releases from Technifiber this year strikes me. Did I, did I miss something? Did there was there a T fight maybe ISO? Was that from this year? I think it was from last year. Uh, yeah, the, right. Uh, yeah, I think so. We mentioned it last year, I think. Yeah. When you're getting uh, so old that we are now, the years are just going into each other. So we don't have any, we we don't know what year it is anymore. So, but it was yeah, exactly. uh, 2022, I think, the um, ISO came out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... um. 
like there's also rackets going to each other because like the some like we talked about before now it seems like they ex extended the release period a bit so maybe it's bubble ionix they, they don't they're not as frequent in making updates i head is by far the most frequent they are really pu pushing new rackets all the time i think they see a lot of return of investment of doing so at the cost of some innovation time i would argue uh, but since they have so many rackets and they've been going at it for a long time they have a pretty solid foundation of of frames and silos so i think they can do it but um but otherwise you you bubble up they haven't updated the pure strike in a long time pure drive we're not sure when um similar can be said like technifiber didn't release a racket this year as far as i know so um maybe at new tfx1 or something next year i haven't seen any release plans so i, I wouldn't know sadly uh, so that's about rackets, I think. Uh, but we also have other topics to talk about. Um, strings is quite interesting. Uh, like we talked about before, you're not a huge fan of testing strings. It can be quite difficult to notice differences in strings. And uh, you need to really like put a lot of time into a string, I feel like, to really understand what it's doing for your game. And then when you have rackets to test as well, you need to go to your favorite strings. Like you had Torbyte. Uh, that's a great string, for example, and and then you you would don't want to test a racket with a new string. That then you were, that's not a good idea, of course. Like you need to cut the variables. But are there any strings you tested this year that you felt like okay, this was a good string. I, I like this string that it's in your now rotation of strings. Yeah, it's. Uh, let's see if I have it here. Um, this one. Ah, nice. The Luxilon uh, ALU Power Ocean Blue. It's a really uh, a really good string. It's more uh, playable than the regular ALU power. Um, we tried it in uh, uh, Pro Stock Wilson version the first time. I also strung up it uh, in Blade 100, and it's um, for me that's the best uh, Luxilon string ever made. Uh, I I love it. It could be mine. Luxilon is pretty expensive <laughs> these days. So if they were not so expensive, I think I would have that as my new go-to string. But I mean, I'm trying a lot of rackets. I'm cutting up a lot of rackets. So I'm sticking with uh, Solinco Torbite. But uh, Luxilon Nailu Power Ocean Blue is um, it's a really good mix of both power feel and spin and also pretty good tension man maintenance. So it's a really good string. And um, what else did I try? I tried... Um, some from um, Portuguese brand, H brand, um, some different strings from it. I think you tried them as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else did we try? Um, yeah, I have not tried that many strings though. Um, Eco um, Power and Eco Rough, right? I think you tried those, right? Yeah. Um, the made from bottles, PT. Yeah, there is one. This one. Eco Power. And also. Is maybe I I'm not allowed to show that one, but is this one out yet? The four yeah, four G desert, that. yeah. So four G is a pretty advanced string, so um, uh, not for me though. Uh, too too stiff for me for, and for because I really like to play with stiffer rackets, so um, that's not a string for me. No, exactly. You need to dial the string in with your racket. For example, like if you can. If you're fine playing at low tensions, for example, if you're playing like, you know, 20 kilos or 44 pounds or something, then you can play with 4G. Uh, your arm is going to be fine probably. But when you you want to be in like a maybe you're on 49 pounds, that's 22 kilos or higher. Uh, I sometimes play 24 kilos if it's a power frame. Then 4G is, is going to be a bit tough on the arm. I tend to, to notice that. Same with all the power. It's not the most soft, but you can play all the power also lower tension what, what's your kind of tension uh, go to uh, these days uh, 80 pounds no that's good uh, it's, like uh, it. <laughs> maybe um 40 45 46 pounds 21 kilos or something like that um i sprung up the old uh, pure drive plus uh, that i'm going to use in the weekend uh 21.5 kilos with the rpm hurricane and uh, yeah, it's um, pretty low tension, and it doesn't matter really what racket I use. Maybe if I should use the Pure Strike or something similar, other new test rackets, uh, I would use a lower tension, maybe 19 kilos. 
but in like a pure aero or v core pro v core uh, head extreme or similar i would use like 21 to 22 kilos yeah i think 22 is the lowest i feel happy with in those power rackets but in like a low power racket i can go a little bit lower uh we were not adrian manorino who can play with like uh you know 10 kilos in in a in a, in a heavy aero pro drive uh, which, yeah, is, and which we... is funny, but it's all depending on your style and, and how you can time the ball and how fast you are to the ball and so on. Uh, strings that I tried, similar feeling like Eco Rough uh, was pretty good, but lasted like two hours, you know, uh, but was a pretty good string in terms of feel. I tried Razor Soft, which is not a soft string from Technofiber. I think that was their big release this year because Medvedev switched to it. A nice string, a little bit firm. So if you drop the tension, it plays pretty nicely. Uh, I like Torline Wasabi. I like Torline strings. They make some good strings, I, I feel like, that are not so stiff. Uh, sometimes you want a tiny bit stiffer string. Then you can go to Selinko Confidential, which is another favorite of mine, for example, that I like in a thin gauge. I play with a lot. Um, but otherwise, yeah, nothing wow in strings. I do. I must say that I agree with you in terms of the, the Ocean Blue from Ola Power. A little bit softer than Ola Power. Felt good control, nice on impact. That, that was that was a thumbs up string that we both can agree on. Okay. You also like to try shoes. Uh, I've tried a bunch of shoes. I'm actually testing a pair of shoes right now that I I must say I, I enjoy a lot. Called the uh, uh, Eclipsion. I think that's the name. They're from Yonex. That's the Eclipsion Four. They're now a five, I think, out that uh, Hurkac and Vavrinka and a few players are are testing. Uh, but this is the four one. But I, I must say it's very comfortable. I feel pretty solid. It's not like a fast shoe and not a super comfort shoe. It's kind of in between, which is usually where I want to want to be. I don't like the speedy shoes. I, I need a little bit more comfort and support for my knees and so on. Uh, so what's been your kind of shoe year? Have you tried any good shoes? Yeah, I'm actually waiting for the Eclipsion 5 from Yonex. I have, they have asked me for my shoes. So hopefully they will come any day now. Uh, I've been trying, uh, let me think, um, I've given the the latest gel resolution a um, lot of attention, the gel res 9. Um, I got them in Marbella this time last year that you were not invited to. Thanks, A6. That's yep. <laughs> uh, and also the clay version of it. Um, really good shoes, good for me. Um, they are pretty narrow. Um, more wide than the version 8, but still pretty narrow. Uh, I've been trying the um, new, not the barricade that they were just releasing, but the barricade that was like like a facelift or something like that with the yeah. um, Three Stripes logo, the Adidas equipment logo on the side instead of the Adidas writing. Uh, one thing that I must mention is that Adidas has made something with the sizes. Normally, I use like use size US 12, but they have um, the shoes feels more um, like they are a size too small these days. So, in size 12 that I've always been using and in Adidas feels too small for me now. I tried the is it called the Cybersonic as well? Yep. I got it in size 12, and I could not the, the my toes was up in the edge of the shoe so i could not uh, i could only walk in that i could not use it uh, for practice because it was too small i had a friend of mine who has um, size us 11 and a half try it and it was too small for him as well so adidas has made something with uh, with the sizes i don't know what but um, so if you are buying an adidas shoe they are excellent shoe really really good good comfort good uh, they are very solid uh, go for a yeah, almost like one size bigger than you normally use in Adidas these days. Um, maybe I got a strange batch, but that is how I feel. Uh, I have not got any new shoes from Nike. I've tried to reach them, but I have not got anything. Uh, I have not tried any news from Lotto, nothing from Diadora. I tried um, K Swiss high. I don't even remember the name of it, but I it was Express, maybe. Yeah, could be. Uh, it was really good cushioning, very wide shoe, uh, but I'm too heavy for it. It was too. Um, the first time it felt okay, but the chassis was too soft for me uh, at the second use and onwards. So I could not use it anymore because I'm too heavy. I mean, I, when you are plus 100 kilos, you need something really, really solid. And um, 
I think the case with this maybe for players that are built more like you, that are really light and fit, <laughs> not like a Swedish whale like me. You're being harsh on yourself, uh, but yeah, you're you're a you're a big guy. You're a tall guy, like, and, and uh, I'm not that tall. So it's good that we have different. We we can get different experiences. We play differently. We have different body uh, types, which is great. Um, Cybersonic, I, I thought it was a pretty good shoe as well from Adidas. They they I did not notice the sizing, but yes, you you might have something there that was a bit tight for for my uh, liking as well. I'm not sure if the Bablat Pro Pulse 3 came out this year because, you know, as you said before, the years are just going into each other. But that's what the shoes I've been using a lot this year is the Pro Pulse 3. Uh, it's been a great shoe, pretty good comfort. Uh, Gel Res, we're both fans of the Gel Res 9. It's been a clay court shoe I've been using a lot this year. I do like the case with Hypercourt Express and Ultra Shot 3. Uh, that's, those shoes are great. Case with shoes should have a thumbs up. Uh, tried a new shoe from Lacoste, the LG23, the Medvedev shoe. Um, pretty good. Had some weird heel. Like it felt like it had a spring in the heel. Like it was like not a spring, uh, literally, but it's like a really strong padding. Like it's really squishy in the in the heel. That was a bit strange. Uh, not super fond of that, but otherwise good. And I tried a new shoe from Lotto that's coming out in May next year. Uh, that was my clay court shoe of the year, I would say, probably together with the Asics. That's a very good shoe from, from Lotto. I'm not very familiar with Lotto shoes. I tried a few, uh, but that shoe was great. And uh, Nike is not maybe for my foot shape. They they produce some good shoes still. Uh, they had the re-release of the 9.5 Vapor. Uh, most people like the 9.5 Vapor than the Feather Vapor Pro or Vapor Tour, but the sh the the sign of it did not appeal to a lot of people. They had like some Indian Wells color and then the the white. So I think that was the problem with that shoe for most people. But it's a, it's a good one still. Vapor Pro 2 was my favorite Nike shoe. The Vapor 11, pretty decent as well. Uh, but you see a lot of pros now going from trying Vapor 11. They, they going back to the previous Vapor, whether that's Pro, the version 1 or, or a Vapor 9 or something like that. The, the, the pros obviously get you know, their shoe they want, custom to their foot, and then they kind of paint it to look like a new model. That, that's uh, kind of like rackets. So uh, this is what you see with... I have some some shoe spies on Instagram. Uh, shout out to you, Andy, as well. Uh, that send me like, oh, look at this. It's another shoe, a custom shoe here. And this, like, I, it's tough to see on pictures if the shoes are very different. But, but he's very good at spotting that. So um, that's been happening in the shoe game. Did you try any other shoes that I didn't mention here? No, no. Uh, shoes are really difficult to try here in Sweden. They are not that keen on sending out uh, shoes for free to try, unfortunately. That's strange, so, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, shoes are very personal, so it's not the easiest to demo because everyone has such... I mean, people have different strokes and different games and different levels, but um, people have different feet as well. So sometimes it can be tricky, like if you have a certain... You know, you need to really describe your foot shape or, or your, you know, your, your, what you like in a shoe uh, sometimes because switching shoes can be a bit detrimental to your, I mean, like your health overall, I would say. Like, it's like, it's not something I would recommend people to do just to switch shoe mold. And when you find something that works, I think your body would be happier just to stay with around that, that type of shoe and, and not switch too many shoes. Rackets are also something that can bring you injuries if you test maybe too much. I don't know. Do you notice that? Do you have like sore arm from too much testing sometimes, or is it is it fine? It's uh, often pretty fine. Um, some rackets that are really stiff rackets, if you are trying them, you could feel some tension in your elbow, in the golf elbow especially. Um, but um, overall, it's. Um, I mean, I'm always using, if I have a regular practice, I try maybe three, four different rackets. So I'm so used to it. It feels almost like if I'm using the same racket, I then I get problem. So, um, yeah, it's, um, I was just uh, reminded myself that I tried one shoe, the Wilson Rush 4.0, I think. Oh, yeah. So that was also a good shoe. shoe. Um, Wilson does make pretty good shoes, um, just on a side note. So I tried that one as well. A pretty strange hardcore pattern, though, with more straight lines. I think it's made more for sliding on hardcore as well. So, but that, yeah, on a side note. But um, yeah, I don't get that many problems on my arms when uh, when I'm trying rackets. 
No, no, I, I've also been fine. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe you learn to adapt or or something, but I have not had any like elbow issues from rackets being stiff or I think what I've I've started to think about a lot this year is that sometimes you can get more issues. I mean, I think it's it's very personal, but like uh, I've talked to this with Nikola Rakic, the intuitive tennis coach. He's like, oh yeah, some flexible rackets give people more problems, which he has a point in, like because you need to exert a lot more force. And sometimes when the ball hits a flexible racket, the sweet spot is smaller, so you hit more off center. And then I would generally say, like, if you want comfort, like, go for a racket that helps you hit the center. Like, if you're hitting off center with any racket, you're gonna get vibrations. You know, it's like this, like trying to. That's sometimes why it like helps to play with a slightly bigger head size than you're used to because you're gonna hit more balls in the sweet spot. You know, and and that's gonna help your arm overall. Yeah, that's true. Um, youth um, that don't get a too demanding racket. A lot of players, they think they are much better than they are in... I mean, you have seen countless of, um, like, almost beginners that are using the RF-97 racket, um, and they almost don't hit the ball. They they miss the ball. So, yeah, don't go for too advanced racket. And know your level, so to say. Yeah, I agree. I think it's 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 good to be a bit humble and and if you're switching to a bigger head size, give it some time because it takes time to get used to it from if you're playing with like a 95 or a old Wilson 6195, for example, which is very popular still among the club player. And then you want to go to a 100 square inch racket. You need to give it some time because your strokes need to adjust a bit to the otherwise the ball might sail a bit long. But overall, in, in when you get used to it, I think you will improve your tennis. Um, I think also depends on what you want. But like you see a lot of players that they just hit and they never play matches. But as soon as you play a match, you realize you need some more help. Uh, you know, generally, I think that's, that's as soon as you go on the match court, you, your strokes are tighter and you, you, you move a bit different. You're a little bit more nervous. So I think the, the help you get from the racket can help most players. Yep, absolutely. Uh, know your limits and um, you will be a better tennis player. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so that's a lot of the gear and one thing i wanted to mention uh kind of is is the balls we, we did test make a long ball test we talked about that a bit earlier uh where we tested like nine cans of tennis balls that you can watch and figure out our opinions about that we should test more tennis balls i haven't been testing a lot of tennis balls i play with like dunlop um australian open today they were pretty good i would say i think it, we tested those maybe during the we test did. I'm not, yes we did yeah, with the, all the grand slam balls i think we tested yeah uh, but overall i feel like when i buy a box of balls and i i open the it's like the quality is less good th than it was before covid it's just something i i feel like it some balls behave really weirdly some balls are almost like dead when you open a can and then you open the other can and it's fine you know uh, so I don't know. Have you noticed that, like that, the ball quality seems a little bit uh, more up and down overall? Absolutely. I mean, when we tried, um, for example, the head um, tour ball, uh, that is one of my absolute favorite balls. I mean, I love that ball. It feels great each and every time, almost. But when we did the ball test, that ball we both did not like, strangely. And then I opened a can the day after you have left, and it was really good again so and i have the same with um i have a tritorn control ball um that a couple of cans were wearing wearing out very fast and other cans were lasting hour after hour uh, i had some um prince balls that were really really hard like almost like a pressureless ball and other balls from the same batch was good so um, yeah, there is something that has happened with the balls after COVID. I don't know what, um, but there seem to be strange thing going on in the production line. I don't know what's going on, but I've also noticed that, that the quality of the balls are really different from can to can. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had it the other day, like, and I, start, I think about it a lot because like I, I have Dunlop Fort as one of my favorite balls. I do like Head Tour as well, Head Tour XT. And with both these uh, different brands, I've noticed like some cans just like, it's just the ball is flying all over the place. It's super bouncy, which is not what these balls should be. 
and then the next can is fine and plays normally. Like I'm like, what what is going on here? It's something that never I never thought about it before as much. Probably happened, but it feels like nowadays it's it's a little bit more uh, common, you know, that like one can of walls is just like a little bit off somehow. Yeah, strange. Strange. Hopefully they will um, figure something out with the quality control of the balls, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and then pro players, like one of the complaints this year was that the players complaining about not the balls per se, but that there were too many different balls. And like some balls super heavy, uh, they hurt, you know, some pro players arm, they hit like every week for hours and hours and hours, and then they travel to a new location, they have a new ball, new court, and new everything. Uh, what's your opinion there? Do you think like tennis players, pro tennis players should be able to just like switch to whatever and adjust to the surface and that's a part of the sport? Or do you feel like they need to look into kind of balls and maybe court speed uh, and try to find like a bit more of a, you know, steady average? I think it will be very difficult to uh, use the same ball in each and every tournament. I mean, that would be like almost like a communist move to rule out every other companies than one um, soccer players they have different balls from different matches different uh, locations um, but tennis players they are it's their working tool they um, they know much 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 better than what I do so um, it's their bodies and if they are feel that it's causing problems for them making their careers shorter maybe there is something that they need to look into or maybe send like a recipe to wilson to head to dunlop to uh, rs uh, that the ball is um like they should have this quality on the rubber they should have this uh, dimension this weight and everyone is making i mean it's made by different brands but on the same recipe so to say let's say like coca-cola is everything should taste like coca-cola in the even if it's pepsi or um, uh, cuba cola from sweden or something similar like that everything should taste the same maybe they should do something with the balls as well um to have like more regulated specifications of the ball like the stiffness of the rubber the weight and stuff like that maybe they should look into something like that but i think it would be difficult to rule out every brand except from one um I think it's too much money involved, but maybe do maybe have a tighter quality control and have the same recipe made by different brands or something like that. That could maybe be a solution. Maybe. Yeah, I, it's, it's something to consider. Um, and for now, I mean, they will. It's not an easy practical problem to solve, as you said, because we have different sponsors, uh, different courts. That it, it's a part of the pro player game that you're going to have different conditions wherever you go uh some people when i talk about the balls they they go straight to the strings and say hey but everybody's using polyester strings at 55 pounds you know in pros not everyone but a lot of them um and that could be a problem of course yes poly strings compared to a poly hybrid natural gut which some pros use or uh, even a multi-filament which used to be the go-to string or natural gut you know used to be the go-to string uh, but we're, tennis is in a point now where you, they can't go back in terms of strings. I don't think the polytor strings would be forbidden anytime soon. That would be an odd, odd move. Yeah, it would be a lot of cows that has to sacrifice their lives for uh, natural gut strings again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right. So, so now uh, we talked about one thing, maybe to finish it, but it's like uh, that since we're playing te playing tennis all the time, but we're also testing rackets all the time. And you go to the tennis court for at least for a practice. For a match, it's maybe a bit different. But sometimes if you don't have a new racket to test or a new string, at least, it's a bit boring. You know, it's like it can get to that feeling like you, you are always looking forward to testing something new. And that makes the search more important than the destination, which is, I guess, is a, a cliche. But it always seems to be that case. It's always fun to have whether it's going to help your game. Probably not. But it's always fun to have some new experiment. I did it today when I play my league match. Like I bring a Arrow 100 when I used to play with the PT7A like two days ago, you know. So it, it's 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 a bit like that. Um, what's your on your next? What's your next experiment besides the Stiga customization? Um, since I don't get that many new rackets, I've been searching the web for uh, older frames. So um, here we have some um, interesting stuff. Um, the one that I'm going to use 
The next practice is this one, a pure drive GT, the blue version. Right. Um, it's the plus version, 21.5 kilos um, with the RPM Hurricane. And then I have to really, really, I don't know if you have even seen those rackets before. Um, it's the a Fisher, the um, this old, but it's the oversize. I never, they didn't know that this existed. No. How, how big, like the general Fisher Pro 90, which is a legend because of Michael Stich winning Wimbledon, also plays amazing. I have a classic racket review on the channel. Uh, what head size is that then? I think this is one no, either 104 or 107. I also have this one. Ooh, Pro Tour 690. And uh, if you compare the 690 with the Fisher, they are pretty much exactly the same size. So I think it's about um, 107 or some, something like that. So um, those rackets I will try. Really interesting. Um, I have the, um, the Candy Cane uh, Radical Oversize. I have five of those. But I always wanted to try this one, the Pro Tour Oversize. And I found one in Austria, pretty expensive, but it was uh, worth it to try. Um, it will be really, really interesting to try this one. I tried it on my Babala RDC machine and the flex strung is 55. <laughs> so it's really, really soft. The Fisher has 56 RA strung and the Babala was 71 RA strung. So um, they will be very, very interesting to try. I have not, tr uh, I have not restringed it. So you see, it still has the Fisher logo from synthetic strings and this classic uh, Fisher damper. damper. So uh, it will be, it will be really interesting to to string them up. Awesome! That sounds like a fun experiment. I, I remember that Pure Drive. It's it's one of my favorite Pure Drives, but it's also one of the firmest Pure Drives. I, I that I could actually feel some arm issues with. But I yeah. love playing with that one. Like it feels so nice when you hit the ball and you get like a nice balance of power and and uh, control. So I, I think you will enjoy that. Especially the longer version is your service will be even better. So it's gonna I be hope uh, so, yeah. Nowadays gonna... now when I don't play that much, I mean I'm I'm all about serves and trying to kill the ball as fast as possible. Maybe even rush to the net one in once in a while. So uh, I think I will need to adjust to a plus length racket. Um, so I can get more advantage from my serve. Yeah, and you have a two-handed backhand, so I think that makes like I for me, I, I sometimes love playing with the plus. Today I actually, or yesterday I hit with a plus. Wait, here, so many rackets. Uh, here it's uh, Aero Plus, the hundred. This one actually is super good on serves. Like it's a super nice racket, yeah. uh, but it's um, it's quite stiff. I feel like it. Maybe I strung it too tight. Sometimes I go too tight on these rackets, but uh, but it's very good. It's one of my best serving rackets, you know. So the so the bubblots plus bubblots they serve like bombs usually, even even for my my pretty Weasley serve. But um, that helps, and I think also like when you get a little bit older and you're not if you're not playing as much, you know, you you need all the help you can get. Like so, if you can get some free points on the serve, I notice when I play, I play a, quite a lot of matches in a year, and I I notice like it's if you don't get anything for free, like any points for free, it's like, it's a grind to play, especially on clay. You play two hours, never ending rallies. Like it's, it's, it's pretty heavy. That's when you get injured. Usually that's how I got my like foot inflammation is because you, you grind on the clay and it's, it's never ending rallies. Right. Yeah, that's true. We are not getting any younger, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yes, exactly. All right. So before your iPhone dies, uh, I'm going to let you go. Uh, are you going to be you. making homemade pizzas tonight? Not tonight, no. Um, maybe on, I would say, Friday next time. I'm not eating yeah. that much pizza anymore. I don't know why. It's um, it's not that much fun making pizza indoors as it is at, as making it outdoors. So um, it's more fun to have a pizza, beer, or a glass of red wine or two uh, outdoors than when it's nice weather. The two weeks in the year in Sweden when it's nice weather, it's nice to eat pizza outdoor.
Yeah, I mean to, to give you some insight, Henrik is a it's a it's a pizza nerd. Uh, with his own uh, pizza oven, he buys flour. He has a uh, really nice uh, ham, like everything imported from Italy. And when I went to his uh, place in summer, uh, I had some of his pizza, which was amazing, Napoli style pizza. Uh, so, so very good. That's why I asked. And it's it's always more fun to eat when the weather is a little bit kinder. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. It is. All right, that's it, Henrik. I really enjoy talking to you as always. Hopefully, we'll Likewise. get some balls in the future. Uh, I hope to get Henrik down to Marbella to play some tennis, practice a bit, get on the clay. Uh, hopefully, the winter is not too harsh here in, in Spain. shouldn't be. Uh, and then we can bring out some more uh, joint reviews, maybe when there, some gear pops in. Uh, but, but for now, uh, we keep it online. Uh, all the best. Merry Christmas and uh, all the rest. And if you want to check out Henrik's stuff, he is on Instagram. I will put it in the show notes so you can see his Instagram handle where he posts all his racket experiments and other things. Have a nice one and we talk soon. Thank you. Cheers.